Hey everyone, it's me. <coughs> I had a fellow YouTuber ask me about engine swaps. So I figured I'd give a little bit of information about how to get started. And, uh, well, the engine that's in your money is uh, a small block just like that one. First thing you're going to want to do is strip down most of the front of the engine. Like the pretty close to where this one is, but it don't have to be that far. <coughs> that way you can clear your radiator and everything. You're going to want to unhook all your fuel lines and you'll probably want to pull your distributor that's right here so that uh, you don't hit it on the firewall. Now, this is the front of the engine. When you come to the back, there's going to be bolts. Right here, here, here. There's bolts all the way around here. You're going to want to take all them out so you can break the transmission away from the engine. Now your torque converter is going to be bolted to your flywheel. There's usually a cover right here at the bottom of the engine, right in front of the oil pan, or behind the oil pan. If you pull the bolts out of that and pull it out of the way, you can get to your torque converter bolts. I'm going to strongly suggest you don't pull the torque converter out with the engine. Go ahead and break it free, take all of its bolts out, and uh, you can turn the engine over by putting a wrench on the bottom nut and turning it so that you can get to each bolt, and a couple of wrenches will fit. <coughs> now, I've done engine swaps in as little as uh, four hours by myself. Just depends on what tools you have and uh, how quick you're at it. The one on the Impala had about six or six to eight hours total in it, but that was because we were doing a lot of matching and we had to deal with the ignition on it. And when you pop your hood, you're going to want to take off your exhaust. <coughs> You're going to want to take off your exhaust manifolds, or they'll be in your way. You're going to want to take off the front of the engine, your alternator, power steering, all that good crap, your fan. Go ahead and take your radiator out so that you got room to work with. Unhook your fuel lines and your electronics. And you said it's a 77, so I'm assuming that it's just got an HCI distributor. Maybe points, but I'm pretty sure it's HEI, which either way is only one or two wires. And then you're going to reach behind the engine and undo all them transmission bolts. Now, <clears throat> before you start undoing those transmission bolts, make sure that torque converter is unhooked. Then you're going to take your transmission pan, probably somewhere in here on your car, take a 2x4 and a jack and put the 2x4 on top of the jack <clears throat> and put it on the very front towards the front of the vehicle on the oil pan, on the transmission oil pan and jack it up just enough so it's supporting your transmission. If not, your transmission will do this as soon as you unbolt it. <clears throat> Now, as for your motor mounts, there's two motor mounts. There's one bolt. When you're looking at the engine, there's one bolt that goes like this. If you pull that one bolt out on both sides, the motor mount comes apart in two pieces. And then you can just lift the engine off the motor mounts, pull it forward some, and then lift it on out. Uh, Don't jack the transmission up too high, or you'll have problems. Now when you're putting the motor back in, you're going to want to jack that transmission up so enough to where you can kind of 
angle the motor in like this and attach it and then set it down in its motor mounts. So you want your transmission up kind of high in the, in the front where the jack is. Just enough for you to get all your bolts back here on. <coughs> uh, I don't know if I can get a picture of it. I don't even know where it is right now. I have an engine hoist that I should probably do a video on. Just do a, a search for engine hoists. I bought mine for 80 bucks. And I bought it at one of the weirdest places here at Big Lots. They had it sitting out front in pieces and they didn't know whether it was all there or not. And I looked at it and knew it was all there, so I bought it. But they range anywhere from like 80 to 150 at AutoZone. <clears throat> or if you've got a garage with a good overhead on it, you can use like a chain hoist or something. Uh, but engine swaps are really easy. Uh, if it's your first one, take your time and don't forget nothing. <clears throat> Keep all your bolts where you know they're going to be, where they need to be, like your transmission bolts, transmission to engine bolts, line them up somewhere and mark them transmission because uh, they're, they're bigger and they're fine thread. Uh, of course you'll have to reset your distributor when you put the new engine in. That's if you take your distributor out. I've done it without taking it out. You just got to be real careful you don't hit it on the firewall and bust something. Uh, <coughs> uh, your, your torque converter bolts, whatever you do, don't lose them. You can buy new ones, but it sh usually never feels the same afterwards. Uh, You'll want to use Loctite when you put them back together so they don't vibrate loose. Because once they vibrate loose and fall out, you're not going nowhere. Your engine's just going to spin in front of your transmission. So make sure you use Loctite on those. I would suggest using a mild Loctite, such as blue or something, on the transmission to engine bolts. Because I've had a few cars where those bolts have backed out after I've put them in. Uh, but the biggest thing is if you take off all this front stuff and the radiator, you'll have tons of room to work and to, pu to pull that engine forward and out. Now if you're going to pull the transmission too, pretty much all you have to do is unhook the lines to it. And I'm assuming it's an automatic, like a TH350 or something. Just unhook your lines and my tire's low. And uh take your cross member out. What I mean by cross member is about the middle of your vehicle there will be a, a bar that goes all the way across from frame to frame and there will be one bolt in the center of it that the transmission is bolted to and then there's two bolts on each side holding it to the frame. Man it's cold out here. Take those off and uh, take the center bolt out and then you should be able to jack the back of the transmission up enough to get the center bolt out <coughs> and if you're doing if you're doing your uh, taking your transmission out too uh, make sure you wrap the tail make sure you pull the drive shaft out or drain it it'd be a good idea to drain it first and then wrap some plastic around the tail end of the transmission and slap some rubber bands on there so you don't dump fluid everywhere. Uh, I actually think it's easier to take transmission and all out, but I usually don't do it if I'm not going to do any work to the transmission. Just for the simple fact of it's awkward getting it out because you have to raise it up like this and pull it out, you know, so it's real awkward.
<clears throat> Make sure you take your starter off when you're taking off your uh, transmission bolts. <clears throat> I wish I had a videotape the engine swap on that Impala because it was really easy. <clears throat> uh, yeah, just take your time. It goes pretty smooth. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six bolts that go from your engine to your transmission. There's also alignment pins, and don't look like the camera wants to focus on it. But there's alignment pins that go into the transmission to line your transmission up. Once you get these slid into your transmission, just slowly tighten up all your bolts, and the engine will pull right up to it. Make sure you wiggle the engine if it ain't seated all the way as you're tightening them so that you don't break the transmission flanges. <coughs> yeah. yeah. That's about it for an engine swap. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, probably next month. I'll be pulling the engine out of uh, the old truck because I need to refresh it and put some new rings and some new valve seats on it and everything because it's running pretty rough and the compression's really low and I'm and uh, I'm not ready to put a 350 in here qu quite yet so I'm just going to refresh this in engine and uh, it's the same basic deal. I just unhook all my stuff, take the front off, pull my motor mounts, unhook the transmission. Uh, <clears throat> the only difference between this and your car will be the transmission because this has a 5 speed standard in it. So I can actually slide this engine right off of the transmission without having to deal with a torque converter or anything because it has a clutch with an input shaft uh, but I may pull the transmission and all because I want to clean the transmission up, drain it and put gear oil back in it because the uh, the books and the computers and everything say that to change it over to automatic transmission fluid and I did when I replaced the clutch and it, the transmission hasn't felt the same since so I'll be going back to gear oil with that one. Uh, <clears throat> so I'll be pulling this out soon. Engine swaps on the older vehicles like your uh, Monte Carlo are so nice and easy. Uh, pretty much any vehicle before 80 that has a Chevy small block in it is so easy to work on. I can't remember what size engines you said you were going to sw switch to, but I know it was a small block, and the size of the block's always the same <coughs> for small blocks. But yeah, it's a real easy job. Take your time, keep track of your bolts and stuff. What I like to do, like you see here, is put, put my bolts back in the holes. So I didn't. So I don't lose nothing. Uh, before you put your engine in, it's probably a good idea to check the freeze plugs, <coughs> which are in these holes right here. Clean them off and check them real good to make sure there's no uh, no serious corrosion or anything. And that's not a major deal, but it's hard to get to them once the engine's in. So you just want to check your freeze plugs and make sure they're in decent condition. There's a couple back here too. There's one right there. Uh. 
If the engine's been sitting, make sure you prime up the oil pump and get oil flowing through the engine before you go to crank it the first time. Uh, it would probably also be a good idea to take like a cap full of oil and drop it in the cylinders through the spark plug holes uh, before you go to cranking it. That way everything's good and walled up before you do it. Uh, double and check, triple check your timing before you go to start it the first time to make sure your firing order is right and everything so that you don't backfire out the carburetor and blow out the power valve on your carburetor <coughs> uh, firing order is probably written on your intake somewhere like uh mine is right there but I don't know if you can see that see where it says firing the firing order is right below that it's on all intakes pretty much so you can look at it there you can look it up in your manual either way uh, when I set timing on an engine I can usually get it within five degrees of where it needs to be before I start it the first time <clears throat> so just take your time on that and one other note make sure you route your battery cable right your positive battery cable make sure it's routed the same way and it's got the heat tube on it if your car came with a heat tube and all the brackets are bolted in because a week from now you don't want to have your battery cable arc out on your exhaust because it melted through because it was touching the exhaust uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to suggest draining all the fluids before you do it just for the simple fact that sometimes you get them dumping out weird holes and stuff when you're pulling it because of the weird angles that it's at uh, but it's not a major deal other than that well, I say the swap's going to be real easy for you, especially on the older vehicles. <clears throat> Just don't forget to have that jack and 2x4 under the transmission. And the only reason you need the 2x4 there is so you don't damage your pan. Because uh, your valve body and pickup tube is right underneath that pan. And if you crush it at all, you'll starve your transmission for fluid. And you'll have slippage, or the vehicle won't even move depending on how far you crushed it. So you want a 2x4 that reaches from edge to edge minimum on that uh, transmission pan. And that's about it. Just take your vacuum lines and electrical off and mark them if you need to so you remember where they hook up and go for it. <coughs> uh, I don't know what else to say. If you got any questions, leave me a comment. I'll answer them. Uh, I don't mind. Sorry about getting being two days late on answering your first one. But I've been kind of busy. And ain't had time to do much. Uh, and for all my subscribers, just to let you know, I'm going to be lowering the truck. I'm probably going to do a 3-inch drop in the back. A three to five inch drop in the back and a three inch drop in the front. So stay tuned for that. <coughs> uh, the front I'll be doing the get a getaway and I don't suggest anybody do it my way because uh, it gives your vehicle a little bit rougher of a ride. But the back anybody can do it That's the way I'm doing it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. Uh, so, hope this helps you some. Let me know if you need, need anything else. Uh, I think that's about it. Have a good day.